Virtually all cultures and religions believe in the idea of recurrent cycles of time. The Western calendar itself is centered around one of these times of renewal, the birth of Christ. Were the prayers of the people a thousand years ago answered in the form of magnificent cathedrals dedicated to the Virgin, the more approachable, feminine aspect of God? And can we accept the idea that the divine manifests itself not just in flesh and blood, but also in stone? The cathedral at Chartres was built in honor of the Virgin Mary as her throne upon earth an earthly palace for the Queen of Heaven. Are we given buildings like Chart Cathedral to experience heaven on earth? I love that question. <laughs> um, because it, 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 it has behind it so many lovely assumptions, and that is that we are being given. Uh, I would say yes, but then one would have to be very careful what one meant by saying yes to the question, because looking at the question, who is giving the giving? And of course, for those of us who are believers, it's very simple. All things are given by God, all things are taken back into God. But um, taking the idea that one is given it in the form of revelation, in the form of, of inspiration, in the form of knowledge and learning, which puts a building like this together. Yes, it is given, and yes, it is for our upliftment, our self-discovery, our experience of unity, anything which brings us closer to our completeness and our rediscovery of our, our own uh, relationship to God. The town of Chartres is built on a powerful sacred spot, a natural peak in the Earth's energy field, which, even in pre-Christian times as the Gallo-Roman town Autricum, was already drawing people like a magnet. After Christianization in the early 4th century, a series of churches occupied the site of the present cathedral. But it was not just pilgrims on a spiritual quest who came here. Chartres also attracted those on a quest for philosophical knowledge, including many Jewish philosophers who contributed to a more universal outlook. The intellectual visionaries who were drawn here in the 11th century established a school which prompted a new flowering of classical knowledge based on the teachings of Plato. Over the course of the next 200 years, the school remained one of the most important scholastic institutions of medieval Europe. We can still recapture the feeling of the pilgrims as they caught a first glimpse across the cornfields of the Beauce countryside. For the modern pilgrim, too, Schach can have a profound and lasting effect. Today, people from all over the world, people of all faiths and religions, visit the cathedral for a multitude of reasons. Its mysteries have always attracted both spiritual seekers and scholars alike. Professor Keith Critchlow of the Prince of Wales' Institute of Architecture in London is one of these pilgrims. He has described his relationship with Schach as a marriage, and indeed it is a strong passion that has prompted him to study the secrets of the cathedral for over 30 years. Oh, 